marking the birth of Jesus Christ. Christmas celebrated in Sri Lanka and around the world with much festivities. Ban no more. Plantations Minister Navi Nisanayaka says Russian authorities have decided to lift the ban on Ceylon tea. Our tea prices and our tea production would have come down. LG polls. Election Commission announces the dates for casting the postal votes for the local government elections due on the 10th of February next year. Positive vibes. Sri Lanka cricket interim coach Nick Pothas is fully optimistic over the performances of Sri Lankan players. From an education point of view and the development of our players, I think it's been fantastic. In international news, Peruvian President Pedro Pablo Kuzninski has pardoned former leader Alberto Fujimori on health grounds in a move that has prompted angry protests. Bring you news from home and across the world. This is first at 9, another there in a 24-7. I'm Katrina Chang. Now, one of the prominent days celebrated in the Christian calendars, Christmas, dawned amidst much celebration across the world. In Sri Lanka too, it was witnessed that despite it being a Christian festival, people from various religious backgrounds gathered together to celebrate the birth of Jesus. According to the Bible, Jesus Christ was born in Bethlehem as the saviour of the world and to redeem the mankind from their sins. Teachings of Jesus Christ commands his disciples to spread the message of love, peace and joy all throughout the world. Thou shalt love thy neighbour as thyself. Meanwhile, the country's main Christmas Midnight Mass was held under the auspices of the Archbishop of Colombo, His Eminence Malcolm Cardinal Ranjit, at the Saints Peter and Paul Church in Ragama last night. The Midnight Mass at the Saints Peter and Paul Church in Katunayaka was broadcasted live on TV Derana. Many other churches were seen celebrating Christmas across the island. On this joyful day, our wish is that the message of peace which was brought to this world by the baby Jesus will be gone to all the hearts of the people, especially to the people of our country and also to all the other non-Christian brothers and sisters living around. Extending greetings for the Christmas, President Maitri Pala Sirisena in his statement says that Christian belief undoubtedly proves to be a guiding star to find solutions for the unprecedented challenges that is faced by the human race. Meanwhile, Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe also greeted the Christians and the entire nation in his Christmas message. Releasing his official message for Christmas, President Maitri Pala Sirisena also added that the path for peace and reconciliation will be paved through spreading love and kindness. In his Christmas message, Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe says that an outpouring of goodness in our hearts can help us find the good in others. The former President Mahindra Rajapaksa also issued a statement releasing his message for Christmas. In his message, he said that, Quote, may every Christian have the opportunity to mark this solemn day with religious observances and contemplation of the message of Jesus Christ to the world. Unquote. Releasing the Christmas message, the Archbishop, His Eminence Malcolm Cardinal Ranjit said, Quote, Let us honour others, love people's lives and share our happiness and joy with others, eschewing selfishness. Let us remember that man's value depended on his conduct rather than on his riches and material positions. Unquote. The government of Sri Lanka has decided to grant early release to 510 prison inmates under amnesty to mark Christmas. The prison spokesman Tushar Upuldenia said, accordingly inmates including convicts serving sentences for minor crimes and prisoners serving sentences for failure to pay fines from 28 
Open-air prison camps and prisons are among those to be released. Meanwhile, Christians all over the world celebrated Christmas with varying traditions signifying the birth of Jesus Christ. Head of the Catholic Church, His Holiness Pope Francis strongly defended immigrants in his Christmas Eve Mass yesterday, comparing them to Mary and Joseph, finding no place to stay in Bethlehem and saying fate demands that foreigners be embraced. Now here's a look at the celebrations from across the world. Starting off in Australia, cold and lack of sunshine didn't stop some people from celebrating Christmas Day on the country's Bondi Beach. In Russia, around 1,500 Santa Clauses representing various countries' New Year traditions flocked to the streets of the Russian city of Rybinsk. Hundreds of Catholic followers attended a Christmas Eve Mass in Beijing amid reported restrictions on the celebration of the annual Christian festivals in cities across the country. Christians across India immersed in the festive spirit as they sang carols in churches that have been decked up for the Midnight Mass. His Holiness Pope Francis, celebrating his fifth Christmas as leader of the Catholic Church, led a solemn Mass for about 10,000 people in St. Peter's Basilica, while many others followed the service from the square outside. Nei passi di Giuseppe e Maria si nascondono tanti passi. Vediamo le orme di intere famiglie che oggi si vedono obbligate a partire. In the city of Bethlehem, Apostolic Administrator of the Latin Patriarchate of Jerusalem, Archbishop Pierre Battista Pizabala, urged leaders present to have courage in deciding the future. Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas and other Palestinian officials also attended a ceremony which was held in the West Bank town of Bethlehem, where Christian traditions say Jesus was born. Christians attended Mass at St. Joseph's Roman Catholic Church in Cairo to mark Christmas and pray for all those killed in attacks in 2017. U.S. and NATO troops put on a festive show at the Bagram Air Base for troops in Afghanistan who were spending the holiday away from their families. Meanwhile, France deployed 97,000 police and military guards for enhanced security measures during Christmas celebrations. The Night of the Radishes, a 120-year-old tradition, comes to Mexico's Oaxaca, Oaxaca region, known for its unique traditions and culture. Every December 23rd, with imaginative displays carved into the red and white vegetables. Three dozen opponents of Venezuela's socialist government were released from prison and reunited with loved ones as part of a wider Christmas release. In the United States, U.S. President Trump attended Christmas Eve service in Florida. Festivities were also underway in many parts of the country. Now on our special segment, a message of hope. Apostolic Nancio to Sri Lanka, His Excellency Archbishop Pierre Nugan spoke on the importance of celebrating the true meaning of Christmas. I would like to greet all of you who follow this program at this moment and wish you peace, happiness and good health. At Christmas, we celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ in Bethlehem over 2,000 years ago. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among people with whom He is pleased. This is how the angels brought the good news of his birth to the shepherds out in the field. Jesus Christ was born to bring us peace. Every human heart yearns for this precious gift that only God can give, a yearning so deep and profound that only God can satisfy. What we understand as peace is the outward expression of and the fruit produced by the inner peace that resides in each one of us. Therefore, it is an invitation for all of us to work together for lasting harmony in our country. If every citizen can accept each other as brother and sister, true happiness 
will reign in our land. Jesus showed special love to little children when he said, Let the little children come to me and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Jesus invites us all to be simple like the little children. Let us admire Jesus in the children and love them, especially those who are yet to be born. It is a message from the infant Jesus from the manger. Happy Christmas. Thank you. You are watching Sri Lanka's award-winning news channel, Other Verena 24-7. Welcome back to the news. Russia decided to lift its ban on imports of Sri Lankan agro products, including Ceylon tea, following discussions with Sri Lankan officials in Moscow today. The restrictions imposed on the 18th of this month after an insect was found in the packaging of a consignment of tea to Russia will thereby cease effective December 30th. Speaking to First at Nine, Sri Lankan Ambassador to Russia, Dr. Saman Veera Singh has said the Sri Lankan delegation assured the Russian Plant Quarantine Institute that exports will fully comply with Russian standards. Russia placed temporary restrictions on imports of tea and all other agricultural products from Sri Lanka on the 18th of December after an insect known as the Capra beetle was found in the packaging of one consignment of tea. Following Russia's announcement, President Maitripala Sirisena wrote to his Russian counterpart Vladimir Putin seeking a lift of the restrictions. Meanwhile, in a bid to create a conducive environment for negotiations to overturn the ban imposed by Russia, the Cabinet of Ministers decided on the 19th to defer the proposed ban on asbestos imports, which was due on January 1, 2018, until further review. Speaking at last week's cabinet media briefing, Minister of Plantation Industries Navin Desanayaka hinted a link between Sri Lanka's decision to lift the ban on asbestos imports and ongoing efforts to have Russian restrictions lifted. Yes, yes. I think from the discussions that we've been having and what I've been saying for the last 10-15 minutes and the fact that the, my cabinet paper and the, the subsequent one is the asbestos one, you can conclude that there is a connection. Russian-produced asbestos hold the largest market share in Sri Lanka, while Ceylon tea accounts for 23% of Russia's tea market. In light of the situation, last morning a team of nine members, comprising representatives from the Ministry of Plantation Industries and Ceylon Tea Board, left for Russia from Sri Lanka. A meeting ensued today between officials from both countries at the Russian Plant Quarantine Institute in Moscow. Sri Lankan authorities had voiced that the discovery of an insect was an isolated event and that all efforts will be diverted to work with Russian authorities to resolve the issue. Speaking to First at Nine, Sri Lankan Ambassador to Russia, Dr. Saman Veerasinghe confirmed that Russia agreed to lift the ban from the 30th of December, adding that President Maitripala Sirisena's letter to his Russian counterpart Vladimir Putin aid in resolving the matter within a short span of time. Speaking to us today, Minister Navin Desanayaka said, had the ban continued, prices of tea would have been seriously impacted. Uh, if the ban continued for a further period of time, uh, there was a great risk that the, our tea prices and our tea production would have come down because 11% uh, of our tea production goes to the Russian Federation. So the speedy action of the President and the Prime Minister and our technical team that went there and the role of both ambassadors, in uh, our, our ambassador in the Soviet Union and the Russian ambassador here has compelled the authorities, the Russian authorities to come to a quick decision on this matter. Adding that Ceylon tea exporters will resume exports to Russia from the 30th of December. So it's a good news for us and you know uh, we were informed that the ban for our tea uh, imports uh, into Russia has been lifted from 30th so uh, we can start uh, you know shipping after the 30th. Almost 12, uh, 12 days we were not allowed to uh, to ship from Sri Lanka. We have been, uh, you know, the, uh, you know the, the delegation has negotiated and Sri Lanka Ambassador in Moscow has informed us that the thing has been sorted, but they will have a little bit of uh, uh, quarantine checks on our goods in the future. You know, our generally our seas are of high standard and also our quarantine systems are good. So we will uh, 
not uh, is, uh, foresee any pro- problems uh, in the future. The Election Commission informed that casting of postal votes pertaining to the 2018 local government election will be carried out on the 25th and 26th of January. Additional Commissioner Saman Sri Ratnayaka said all government officers who are qualified to cast their votes will be able to do exercise their franchise during the two days. Submission of postal votes application for the 2018 local government election concluded at midnight on December 22nd. The Election Commission stated that returning officers will certify the list of postal vote applicants on the 8th of January. Meanwhile, postal vote ballot papers will be posted on the 11th of January and casting of votes will be carried out on the 25th and 26th of January. Security forces, personnel including police officers as well as other state employees directly involved with the election process are given the opportunity to cast their postal votes on the 22nd of January. Meanwhile, different views were expressed on the upcoming local government election in the political arena. जनवारी मास यात्रा में दान दूँ है तो महाबैंक को बैंडम कर दानों दिनों सिद्धू ने पेपर वारी मास से बिस्याह था रानी विक्रम सिंह का महत्व आकर मैं तो पूरी वार्ड में कोटमा एलडीएन के पुरुष पराम बुनने एलडीएन नाम बुना आरजुन महेंद्र पाहन के सेवित General Secretary of the United People's Freedom Alliance, Minister Mahinda Maravira, says if anyone wishes SLFP to proceed as a single party, they should drive the party to victory at the local government elections. Minister Maravira made these remarks addressing a public rally in Matra yesterday. राज्य संपत्ति जनाधि Former President Mahindra Rajapaksha says the upcoming local government elections should be considered a referendum to express agitation against the government's activities. The former president made these remarks addressing a public rally at Pitipana in Homagami yesterday. At the public rally organized in Pitipana, Sri Lanka Pudujana Perumuna contestants made a pledge not to engage in corrupt or fraudulent activities once elected to the Pradeshya Sabha. <laughs> Meanwhile, former President Mahindra Rajapaksha paid a visit to opposition leader Asam Bandhan, who was receiving treatment at a private hospital in Colombo. Minister of Telecommunication and Digital Infrastructure Harin Fernando says the era for United National Party to keep its silence is over. Addressing a meeting held in Bandaravela, the minister also emphasized that efforts are underway to establish a UMP government in the country. UMP ministers, parliamentarians as well as supporters participated at the UMP membership drive organized at the Bandaravela city centre yesterday. 
Goldman Sachs said a stronger than parties anticipated OPEC led commitment to extreme production. Cuts would likely support oil prices through 2018. The U.S. bank lifted its Brent price forecast for next year to $62 U.S. dollars a barrel and its West Texas Intermediate projection to $57.50 U.S. dollars a barrel. The revisions were up from $58 U.S. dollars a barrel and $55 U.S. dollars a barrel, respectively. The U.S. Energy Information Administration and the International Energy Agency have both indicated strong global demand growth in 2018 at 1.3% or above. You are watching Sri Lanka's award-winning news channel, Other Verena 24-7. France will deploy 97,000 police and military guards as per enhanced security measures during Christmas celebrations. Though the two-year-long state of emergency was lifted on the 1st of November, the continued measures are in place to deal with all kinds of security threats. French police had thwarted 13 attempted attacks since the beginning of the year. According to the new security arrangement, 54,000 police, 36,000 military police and 7,000 soldiers will be involved in security patrolling, especially in the shopping centres, activity areas, churches and public transportation hubs. The total number of security personnel involved in the arrangement will be 6,000, more than the same period last year. Based on the recent terrorist threats faced by the country, France's interior minister has formulated special security measures in various areas during the Christmas festivities and said that each authority has the right to cordon off any congested area as and when required. Peruvian President Pedro Pablo Kuczynski has pardoned former leader Alberto Fujimori on health grounds in a move that has prompted angry protests. 79-year-old Fujimori, who is serving 25 years for human rights abuses and corruption, was moved from prison to hospital because of health problems on Saturday. The decision by Peruvian President Pedro Pablo Kuczynski to pardon former leader Alberto Fujimori triggered a Christmas Eve protest in downtown Lima, where police fired tear gas at scores of Fujimori opponents. Kuczynski denied pardoning him as part of a deal with his party last week to avoid his own impeachment. Meanwhile, supporters of the man who led Peru from 1990 to 2000 celebrated outside the city hospital where he was being treated. In 2007, Fujimori was sentenced to six years in jail for bribery and abuse of power, but two years later was sentenced to another 25 years in prison for human rights abuses committed during his time in office. He was convicted of authorizing killings carried out by death squads. Let's now take a look at some other stories making news across the world. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has instructed Israelis envoy to the UNESCO to officially announce the country's withdrawal from the organization. It is the first substantive action Israel has taken since it decided to leave UNESCO in October. Israeli Foreign Minister said the decision was based on the UN Culture Agency's systematic attacks on the Jewish state and attempts to disconnect Jewish history from the land of Israel. Israel will leave the organization by the end of 2018. A suicide bomber blew himself up close to a compound of Afghanistan's National Intelligence Agency in Kabul today, killing 10 people and wounding another five. Islamic State said it was behind the attack. The blast comes a week after IS claimed another attack on a training facility of the Afghan intelligence agency that ended when the attackers were killed before causing significant casualties. Meanwhile, three dozen opponents of Venezuela's socialist government were released from prison and reunited with loved ones on Christmas Eve as part of a wider Christmas release. 
Lambasted by critics at home and abroad for holding around 270 activists in prison, President Nicolas Maduro's administration said it was releasing 80 of them with alternative sentences like community service. You are watching Sri Lanka's premier news channel, Other Dharana 24-7. Let's now cross over to Shilla Fernando at the other Derna Weather Center for your forecast first evening edition. Good evening and welcome to Forecast First. Tomorrow's temperatures will average at around 28 degrees Celsius in the coastal areas of the island and about 20 degrees in the central hills. A low pressure zone is expected to form over the eastern region of the country and will gradually spread across the island, hitting the western and the southern part of the island. Thundershaws are expected in Mana, Anuradhapura and Colombo as well as in Kandy. That's it from the Weather Centre tonight. Up next is your City by City Forecast. When you have the time, make sure you connect with us on Facebook as well. You can visit our Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash first at nine on Twitter at twitter.com forward slash first at nine. And before we leave, we will leave you with some carols uh, at the, held at the St. Sebastian College Muru tour recently. We hope you enjoy. Bringing you the news and information 24 hours a day. This is Sri Lanka's premier news channel. Other Verona, 24-7. Boys and girls.